Under the Banner of Heaven tells the true story of the murder of Brenda Wright Lafferty and her 15-month-old daughter Erica by brothers Ron and Dan Lafferty. Please. Before we start here are major spoilers ahead and do subscribe our channel. I belong to her and to Erica. The ending of Under the Banner of Heaven sees Dan and Ron Lafferty apprehended for their crimes as they continue to spout their delusional rhetoric, leaving many of the other characters questioning their own faith. The end of Under the Banner of Heaven follows detectives Jeb Pyre and Bill Taba tracking down Dan and Ron Lafferty at a casino in Nevada. Jeb realizes that they likely won't find both brothers alive, as the prophecy of the one mighty and strong specifically indicates that only one of them was chosen by God. Proving himself right, Jeb finds the brothers in a bathroom where Ron is choking Dan to death with a belt, declaring that he must remove Dan as a false prophet. Andrew Garfield's Under the Banner of Heaven character stops Ron before Dan can be killed, both brothers being arrested for the murders of Brenda and Erica Lafferty. Now if you obey, you will be forgiven. Dan and Ron claim that the murders are of no personal account. They are simply obeying the commands of God to remove these individuals that came to Ron in a revelation. Since Ron now sees himself as the one mighty and strong, anything that he claims is the word of God will be considered as such by his brother as well. However, Ron himself knows this is not true and that he's using his delusions of religious grandeur to enact a personal, rageful vendetta against those who he blames for ending his marriage. Under the banner of heavens Dan and Ron are narcissists who seek power above others and the will to do whatever they desire, which they conveniently find validation for in fundamentalist Latter-day Saint scriptures. Ron and Dan were both found competent to stand trial for the murders of Brenda and Erica Lafferty, with the prosecution and psychologists declaring that they knew exactly what they were doing when they murdered their sister-in-law and infant niece. Ron and Dan's descent into religious extremism was fueled by their narcissistic pursuit of power and justification for their domestic abuse and violent rages. The religious scriptures enabled and fueled their brutalities, but their delusions of grandeur as prophets weren't the cause of these murders. I'll leave the choir on for you. Dan takes such threats directly from fundamentalist LDS teachings, but under the banner of heaven also makes a point of how sexist and abusive such beliefs still were in 1984. Women were taught to be obedient to men, be perfect housewives, and bear children, with Alan pointing out to Jeb how the LDS church would look down on and punish women who were independent and prioritized their free agency. Matilda and Diana were soon subject to the abuse of women described in early LDS practices, with it seeming impossible to leave such situations without a network of outside assistance. Matilda couldn't leave without fear that she would be killed or her daughters taken from her, while Diana couldn't have left without the encouragement from Brenda and financial assistance from the Lowe's and Stowe's. Chosen, you and your brothers simply failed! Under the banner of Heaven's Ending sees Dan and Ron Lafferty arrested for the murders of Brenda and Erica, but the series leaves their futures ambiguous. In real life, under the banner of heaven's characters were tried and convicted for the murders, with Dan receiving two life sentences, while Ron was given the death sentence. Under the banner of heaven's finale shows Ron attempting to kill the scripture bearing Dan Lafferty before they're arrested, but this actually happened, while the two were awaiting trial in jail a few months later. Ron would try to appeal his death sentence several times over the years, with the murderer eventually dying of natural causes in November 2019. Dan Lafferty is still serving his life sentence in Utah State Prison today, with seemingly no remorse for the brutal killings. You must perish. This has been hinted throughout the series, under the banner of Heaven's Ending is meant as a warning of unyielding faith, especially when such institutions continually demonstrate individuals' abuse of religion for cruel actions and personal gain. Under the banner of Heaven's Ending suggests that having faith is not the problem, but being unable to criticize any aspect of the leaders, practices, or teachings as a zealot is dangerous, not just for oneself, but for others as well. Under the banner of Heaven frequently referenced instances of violence in Mormon history and abuse on behalf of the church's leaders that they claimed as the will of God, with nobody stopping them for fear of betraying their faith. You're not to talk to him again, you understand, unless you have my permission. I must obey, right Jebediah? One's own judgment must also be a guide in life, as under the banner of heaven demonstrates that the truth of a religion's history and patterns of abuse that are buried may undermine the rest of the words that are preached. 
corruption can be found in such institutions that may preach otherwise, with unyielding faith even being used to justify the slaughter of innocents. As has been hinted throughout the series, under the banner of heaven's ending is meant as a warning of unyielding faith, especially when such institutions continually demonstrate individuals' abuse of religion for cruel actions and personal gain. And a lot more people die, kids die. Under the banner of heaven's ending suggests that having faith is not the problem, but being unable to criticize any aspect of the leaders, practices, or teachings as a zealot is dangerous, not just for oneself, but for others as well. Under the banner of heaven frequently referenced instances of violence in Mormon history and abuse on behalf of the church's leaders that they claimed as the will of God, with nobody stopping them for fear of betraying their faith. One's own judgment must also be a guide in life, as under the banner of heaven demonstrates that the truth of a religion's history and patterns of abuse that are buried may undermine the rest of the words that are preached. Corruption can be found in such institutions that may preach otherwise, with unyielding faith even being used to justify the slaughter of innocents. The meaning of under the banner of heaven's ending also preaches that faith doesn't necessarily mean an organized religion or unbending devotion to God, as faith can be found in the belief of one's own family or the miracles in the beauty of nature. Rather than only living for the entrance to an eternal afterlife with God, under the banner of heaven's true story ending emphasizes the importance of living and being in the moment. Jeb Pyre learns to look around at his family in every mundane moment and appreciates the fact that he's able to observe the mountains and rivers with his mother, thus putting much of his faith in the secular aspects of life. Ron and Dan's actions were of their own doings, not at the will of God. All the while, Jeb learns to appreciate life and family with a separation of them as a gift from God, as under the banner of heaven's ending sees him living in the present, rather than waiting for eternity.